Welcome to part 10 of a triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention. Modifying the steam inlet and setting the slide valve timing of the high pressure cylinder, then connecting some compressed air to the engine. The very first job in this episode has to be getting rid of this hideous steam inlet. And it's made up using commercial pipe fittings, which is never a good idea on small engines. Two pipe fittings have been silver soldered to the mounting flange and here's a close-up of just how horrible it is. When you build a small steam engine like this, where the cylinder bore of the high-pressure cylinder is only three quarters of an inch, making a steam inlet like this really is very bad. The only part I need to keep is the actual flange that mounts on the cylinder, so using my bandsaw I cut off the other pieces. The hole in the centre of the flange is quite small, so with a 2BA tap in the chuck of my small Myford lathe, I screwed the fitting onto the tap like this. In this clip I'm using a cloth to hold the flange, to make it more comfortable to screw the inlet flange onto the tap. In no time at all, the hole in the centre of the flange was threaded 2BA, so why am I doing this? The answer is that on the outside of this inlet flange is a load of silver solder, so I couldn't hold it in the chuck to centralise the hole to thread it normally as I would do with the tap in the tailstock. Now with the 2BA stud fitted into the chuck, I can tighten this part onto the stud, which will allow me to machine the messy bit with the silver solder on it. It's very important not to reduce the diameter of this part too much, because I need to thread it quarter by 32 threads per inch. Also, I'm not going right up to the shoulder of the flange, because I have a sneaking feeling that the part that I'm machining may have been silver soldered to the flange and I do not want this part to come away from the flange. That's why I'm leaving a very small ridge, just as a precaution. It should look okay when it's fitted back to the engine. Either way, it's miles better than the original arrangement. Once I'd machined the part to the size that I needed, I turned it round in the chuck, and opened up the hole to 7 seconds of an inch. And here, manually, I'm threading it using a quarter by 32 threads per inch tap. And if you wonder why the image is moving around a bit, it's because the entire lathe is sat on foam pads, which keeps the noise down because I do have neighbours in close proximity to the workshop. I'm about to set the valve timing on the high pressure cylinder, that's why I've removed the steam chest cover. But before I do that, I'm going to refit the inlet flange on the side of the steam chest. After I've cleaned up the front of the part using some wet dry sandpaper on a steel plate. This is a high pressure steam joint and I need the part to be flat before I bolt it back onto the gasket. Don't ask me why the hole isn't in the middle. This was done by the builder and one of the reasons for this is the angle at which this part fits to the steam chest. I will never know why the builder fitted this flange to the steam chest at this angle and I can't ask the builder because unfortunately he is deceased. Although one of my friends is a medium, I don't know, maybe she could ask him. But anyway, that's the way it is. As a very temporary measure, I re-threaded one side of this commercial union 32 threads per inch instead of 40 threads per inch. Which is a terrible thing to do, and I am aware of it, but I really wanted to get some air to the engine without messing about. I pushed the piece of silicone rubber piping onto the end of it, but unfortunately, when I put the pressure in there, it blew off. So I refitted it using a cable tie. With about 50 pounds per square inch connected to the engine, it's quite difficult to turn over. But suddenly, without warning, it started to run. Obviously the timing at this stage is not right. I set the timing for the high pressure cylinder that this is a triple expansion engine and there are two other cylinders timing to take into consideration. I turned the reversing handle to make the engine run in reverse. And you may notice that it's running a lot better in the other direction, so there's definitely something wrong with the valve timing. The question is, is it on the high pressure cylinder, the intermediate cylinder, or the low pressure cylinder? Because they all have to interact with each other. The best way to set the valve timing is to set the slide valve on each cylinder individually. And that's what I will do on this engine when I rebuild it. But don't forget, this is not the rebuild. This is just a look at the engine and making it work. Once it works, I will be able to dismantle the engine and rebuild it from the ground up. At the moment, I'm very busy indeed, and I'm not complaining. 
it's just difficult to find all the hours to put the time in to do the work. And I'm also very busy in the recording studio as well. Couple that with some age-related health problems that I have, and tomorrow I've got to go and see the doctor yet again, which means I will not be in a position to edit the video for part 11. So there won't be a video tomorrow. There's one more episode about this engine, where I show it running a lot better than it is currently, and I can't decide whether to sell it as it is, or as it will be as you see in the next episode, a very suitable project for someone else to rebuild, because remember these engines are not that common and they are very expensive. What I'm about to do is see whether it's possible to notch the engine back, and it will notch back very slightly so it's not a million miles away. With a steam engine, notching back is moving the engine slightly towards reverse and this uses less steam, or in this case air. Just in case any viewers are wondering when I'm going to stop talking, I will stop talking near the end of the video and let you get a really good long look at the engine running, hopefully better than it is at the moment. With quite a lot of steam engines it's a compromise as to whether it runs better in forward or reverse. This engine does not run the same in either direction, it runs much better in this direction. There are still some problems with this engine, the other two connecting rods need some attention. The fork of the connecting rods and the bottom part of the connecting rods are screwed to the main shafts. And apart from the one that I repaired, the high pressure cylinder connecting rod, the other two are quite loose. And here for instance, the long bolt that goes through the eccentric strap is not threaded far enough down, so I cannot tighten the strap onto the sheave. And as you can see, it's a bit of a rattle fit. But when all's said and done, this is a steam engine, quite a clever steam engine, and I think there's possibly only a steam engine that would run in this mechanical condition. The good thing about a compound engine, in this case it's a triple expansion compound engine, is that the steam is split between three cylinders. And on this engine, the bore of the high pressure cylinder is only three quarters of an inch, exactly the same as on a number 10 steam engine. Even though I didn't film it, I've done quite a lot of tweaking and now when I wind the reverser to the other end, the engine's running slightly better. And this is what I mean by tweaking, slightly changing the position of the eccentric sheave. Here for instance, I've just adjusted the position of the sheave and now it's not running quite as well, so obviously I've moved it in the wrong direction. Steam engines are very harmonious sinusoidal engines. In an ideal world, all the exhaust beats need to be even. When I change the direction of the engine, you will notice that it's starting to sound quite good in both directions. And for its size, it's very powerful indeed. I wouldn't want to get my fingers anywhere near the moving parts inside the frame. How much air pressure am I using here? 40 pounds per square inch. And bear in mind, it will work much better on steam pressure. Because I've disturbed the engine, well to say the least, I need to apply plenty of oil and what I'm doing here is applying oil into the cylinders via the drain cocks. You may be wondering why this steam engine is so noisy. Don't forget, my workbench is a soundboard. When I lift the engine off the bench and sit it on a piece of Scotch-Brite, it's not quite so noisy. And even with its loose connecting rods and loose bits and pieces, it's still running quite well which means that the valve timing on all three cylinders must be somewhere near. In the next episode I'm going to look at the valve timing of the low pressure cylinder. I'm winding the handle which moves the expansion links and allows the engine to run in the other direction. And as you can see in here, with the expansion links at this end it's still a bit lumpy. This is largely due to the fact that the centre drop arm is a bit loose on the reversing shaft which means the valve timing of the intermediate cylinder, the one in the middle, is slightly retarded. I put this right in the next episode. The slop on the linkage that controls the valve timing of the middle cylinder is not a problem when the engine is running in this direction. Today in my workshop it's very cold. I have an air conditioning unit which cools the workshop very well but it's not very good at keeping it warm. You'll see how cold it is as I refill my oil bottle with this bearing oil that I get from Hallett Oils. Look at the consistency of the oil as I pour it. It's definitely very cold in here. 
Even though I'm fat and hairy, I'm feeling the cold today. That's it for the narrative. I'll leave the engine running at different speeds to the end of the video. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.